Hey there, it's Sunday, September 26, 2021. This is all about your Benjamin, your weekly mixtape, and your weekend review video. And it's been a few weeks. I know I've said this a bunch of times over the last you know few months. Uh, I've really been struggling to get the schedule down with sports and work and, and everything that's going on. Um, and you're all busy as well, so it's only an excuse. Time is there when it's important. But I've realized how much I've missed doing these videos. And also, I see other mixtapes floating around out there. And while I love all of you, um, competition is great. I need to make sure that I retain the king of the mixtape, at least in the finance world of the weekly publications of some great articles about what's going on in the news, along with some great reading that you'll see down below the video. So uh, the mixtape is back. I've got to make sure that I keep it consistent so I can continue to wear that crown. So let's get to the headlines that may or may not be impacting your financial plan and portfolio. And you know most of the times it's towards the may not, right? So let's get to them. So a handful of articles this week. The first one we're going to start off with talking about Congress in D.C. And it's going to be a week full of headlines. Headlines to move the markets, headlines to make you panic, headlines to make you think of these potential storylines that could come true. And maybe they do. I'm not saying they won't. But these headlines that could make you deviate from your plan, which we all know is the worst thing that we can do. So the major headlines are Congress is working on a couple of bills, spending package, education package. Those are big news. But the big news is the debt ceiling conversation that's coming and the funding running out for Congress on Friday the 1st. This is not the first time we've seen this. I remember the first time hearing about this in my career. I thought it was a huge deal, and it it is. You know, government employees not working, not getting paychecks, things kind of shutting down. Uh, But then what we've seen, and what I believe will happen, is they'll get their act together, they'll pass something. Uh, It'll probably be tied to one of the bills that's going through. It's unnecessary, uh, but it's the political stance that they do. So just be aware that that headline's out there. And real quick, while we're talking about headlines, over the last few weeks, I've had some, some clients reach out with just some concerns about things going on. And they're usually centered around who's in office, political things, these stories that could happen, uh, the IRS wanting to track $600 moving in and out of your bank accounts, uh, which I understand why people don't like that. I understand why people are concerned about that. Uh, but I also want to remind everybody that there's always storylines, always storylines. And there's always events happening as well. And when you look back over all of those storylines and you look back over all of those events, the best thing for you to have done was to stay the course. Stay with your plan, not make any reactions, uh, talk to your financial advisor, revisit why you're doing what you're doing, and then make a change if that storyline or those events change what you want to do. Otherwise, history has shown us, and the disclaimer of past performance doesn't, doesn't dictate the future is thrown out right now, but past the history has shown us that things work themselves out. Um, and I offer this up and it's not very comforting and it's not you know, fully true, but if those scenarios played out, the world ends, your accounts go to zero, you have to think about what's going on in that moment for the world's largest companies to be going down to zero, to take your diversified funds down to zero as well. It probably doesn't mean there's, it, well done. there's nowhere good for your money to have been at that time. So yes, these storylines are out there, But I think living and investing requires you to have a little bit of faith that things work themselves out, that markets do what they do. People come in when the opportunity is ideal and bring things back up, new businesses uh, develop and things continue to move forward. So be careful, don't let these headlines come up. They can be scary. There'll be a lot of uh, articles that are out there floating around that aren't necessarily true, so check your sources. But a big week of news coming out of DC this week. Uh, Don't let it make you deviate away from your plan unless you decide your plan has changed, which means you need to make a change. All right, next up, the Fed. We'll keep this one short and sweet. We always talk about the Fed, keep an eye on what they're doing just because it's got implications to a lot of things. And they have released some notes that there's a good chance they might look to stop the taper, potentially uh, raise rates next year. So they're setting the stage for them making some actions, making some changes after years of really not making a lot of changes to keep the economy going. Um, Inflation has gone up. I think the article says you strip out uh, fuel and volatile foods. It's up 3.6% this year. Remember the the target number for the Fed is 2%. Now there's a lot of ch- uh, supply chain issues, you know, shipping taking longer, materials not being there, still fallout from COVID that are causing some of this. The belief and the hope is that as supply chain picks back up, 
then those prices could come back down. Uh, maybe not all the way down to where they were before, but much lower. So we'll have to see, but that's the belief has been that it's transitory, meaning that it's gonna go back once these things open back up. Uh, but the Fed is planning to see that they're gonna make some changes coming up, and we'll see how the markets react to that. Quick headline, um, coming out of China, there was a, there was a uh, company that missed Evergrande, that missed a bond payment, uh, the, could be the largest default in uh, US dollars over in China. Uh, the reason I bring this up is this was a headline last week. It's kind of calmed down, but when this first came out that they were going to miss their, pay, their interest payment to bondholders, there was a lot of talk about 2008, 2009, was this the beginning of another financial crisis? Could it start in China? Could it make its way over here? Anything can happen, so I would say yes, it could. Is, is it going to? It does not look like that's the case. I don't know if this is a canary in the coal mine over there or not. Uh, but again, headlines come up, things come up, and that was a big headline earlier in the week, and it uh, did have some, had some, well, we believe it had some impact on the market. Again, we never know really what's the headline that moves the markets, whether the, the market move and then we attach it to that headline or vice versa. So um, bring that one up for you. Uh, heading down to some less market related things, the CDC uh, has, a, has backed the Pfizer booster, so we're getting into the talks of now it's time to start getting boosters for the COVID vaccination, which only continues the political d debate that goes on about these things, the, 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 the arguments between friends and families on both sides of the table, but uh, they're recommending that those at high risk, the elderly, those working in those areas, consider getting the booster, uh, so that is out there as well, but it looks like... Um, it looks like things might, I'm not, not going to might be slowing down um, as far as the spread of COVID. Um, I have no expertise in there, but just from what I observe, what I hear, um, to my knowledge, you look at the college football games going on, you know, hundreds of thousands of people at the Penn State game, stadiums full, and I haven't heard of any major super spreading events. So um, knock on wood, that trend continues and we get continue to get closer and closer to more normal and maybe to accepting that uh, this variant is now going to be slowing down, that COVID is going to be more like the tr traditional flu. It comes, it goes, we take proper precautions and it is a part of our life going forward and we don't have to shut things back down. But it'll be uh, an interesting fall, so we'll see what happens. Uh, two more things. Might want to start planning for Christmas sooner rather than later. There are cargo delays. I mentioned supply chain issue, but shipping. Uh, there's an article in here that talks about a uh, California port, one of the largest ones in the U.S., how it shuts down daily, it shuts down over the weekend. Uh, understandably, people can't work around the clock, but that just fuels the fire that is the slowdown. So, if you wait until Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving to do your Christmas and you're shopping online, or even if you're going to the stores, you may not find what it is that you're looking for. So, uh, you may want to think about getting ahead of the game and doing your Christmas shopping a little early. Angie and I were talking about that this morning. We'll probably do ours earlier than usual. And final. China just uh, declared cryptocurrency transactions illegal, which made the Bitcoin price uh, kind of fall, well, crypto fall. Uh, this is not the first time China has tried to do this. I saw an interesting tweet. I wish I could find it so I could just pop it up, but I couldn't find it because I can't remember who said it. But basically, it, this is maybe the fourth or fifth time that China has done this, and every single time the price of Bitcoin continued to rise. So it is a storyline. It doesn't uh, take away cryptocurrencies rise and the value of it. If anything, I think it shows that it has a lot of um, staying power and that if China is concerned that it's going to take away their ability to control their citizens, then them trying to stop it just shows that it, it, it does work and it can be very powerful. So obviously cryptocurrencies, crypto assets are something that it's a higher on my interest list uh, as of late. Um, I, so I wanted to share this as it's something that I talk about, read about, and I'm staying in the space quite a bit these days as I do my work at OnRamp while balancing out RLS Wealth. Speaking of OnRamp, you might notice the shirt I'm wearing today. We were up at the Morningstar Conference in Chicago, uh, the first in-person conference I've been to since pre-COVID. And we all from OnRamp represented, didn't represent, we decided to bring awareness to my hood, or my block, my hood, my city. An organization in Chicago doing great work trying to combat the crime and the gunfire that's going on up there. Um, when we got back, or I guess Friday, I was back, the rest of the team was still up there. We did a little fundraiser out on Twitter where we tried to raise funds for the organization. So in this week's mixtape, there is a link to My Block, My Hood, My City. If you would like to make a donation, I told everybody that I would make a match of $1,000 in contributions. Our good friend, Mr. Purple Anthony Steech, Matt, uh, he maxed that out right away. He had our first contribution, he made a $1,000 contribution. So my max was out 
Um, so I gave uh, a donation when I bought this shirt. I made another donation on Friday to kick it off and then I'll make my match donation this weekend. So if you wanna do some good, make a small donation, you have the funds available to do that. Uh, my, blo my block, my hood, my city would be a great organization for now because we were just there. And that's one of the things we're trying to do uh, with On Ramp is as we go to these conferences, a lot of money is being spent at these conferences, whether it be dinners and swag that's given away or the booths that are paid for, trying to do something for the community that we're in. And that's all spearheaded by our CEO, Tyrone Ross. He was already doing that in the past. But as our culture of our company continues to grow strong, that's a part of who we are at OnRamp as well. So uh, we'll be off to Palm Springs this week for a couple days. I don't know what we're going to do quite yet, but we'll find an organization there and probably do another fundraise or at least draw attention to organizations in that area. So my block, my hood, my city, make a donation if you'd like. Check them out, great organization. Um, and I'll let you get to your weekend. So a little bit longer than usual, but I needed to, to cover a lot of ground today, a lot of headlines to cover. I um, also wanted to bring attention to this organization while I had your attention. So thanks for watching. Consistency is the key. The mixtape is going to be back. I need to keep the crown on and be the king of the mixtape in the finance world. Uh, so check the articles down below, links to all the review articles that we just covered. Have a great week. Be sure to subscribe, like, all of those great things you know you're supposed to do. And we'll see you all in the next episode.